Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. As we come across the time in which uh, Jacob is in, in this particular point in the book of Genesis, we find the nation of Israel, which is really just a clan at the present moment, is very vulnerable, very vulnerable. As he left Laban and the stability with Laban and, and uh, the many people that were there, uh, he was very protected and secure there with Laban. Now, Jacob has left Laban, and now he's trying to make it back to his father, but uh, he stops off some places. First, he stops at Succoth, uh, kind of creates some booths there, and he kind of hangs out there at Succoth, but then he makes it into Shechem, and there he's very, very vulnerable, uh, just him and this clan that he's with, and if the Lord had not been protecting him through this, it's very likely that Israel, the clan of Israel as it was, uh, might have been done away with. Had the Lord not stepped in, we already saw that Laban might have overtaken Jacob. And, and who knows what Laban would have done uh, to him when he did that. He might have taken his daughters by force. And who knows, maybe Jacob himself would have uh, underwent physical harm. Uh, we also see the Lord looking after Jacob in connection to Esau. And Esau uh, had a lot of reason to bring harm to Jacob and to his company. And even Jacob himself was afraid of that. Uh, but the Lord had blessed Esau so much that Esau wasn't really concerned, wasn't really mad at Jacob anymore. So the Lord helped him out there. But even here at Shechem, uh, another danger comes. And, and this time, it's not so much that Jacob and his little clan might uh, be destroyed or killed or uh, somehow physically harmed, but they could have been done away with just simply by assimilating into the people there at Shechem. Uh, that's what they wanted to do. Uh, if you remember, Dinah was uh, out and she was hanging out with uh, the women of the land and this man Shechem came in and raped her. Uh, a very atrocious thing that he did. And of course, Jacob hears about it. And then eventually his sons hear about it. And they're very angry. But Shechem comes with his father. Shechem really want, uh, tells his father that he really wants to marry Dinah. He, he loves her very much. And this is the proposal that uh, Hamor, Shechem's father, makes. He says, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him in marriage. Intermarry with us. Give your daughters to us and take our daughters for you. Thus you shall live with us and the land shall be open before you. Live and trade in it and acquire property in it. In other words, become a part of us. Come on in and we'll just become one people. We'll have your daughters to take in marriage. You can have our daughters to take in marriage. Our property will be your property. By doing this, this would have caused really Israel as a clan later to become a nation to really just become nothing. Uh, this later happens to the northern tribes when Assyria comes in. Uh, Assyria just assimilates, sends other nations into that northern area and they assimilate with the people and, and they begin to lose their identity. And that's what could have happened here in Shechem uh, in this particular situation. And... As you do your reading today, you'll see how this all turns out. Uh, actually, Jacob's sons, uh, Reuben and Simeon, end up destroying the town and everything like that. And Jacob becomes very worried uh, because of that. But this whole situation is averted. I'm not going to say that the means that they used was acceptable, but it did at least keep Jacob from assimilating with these people at Shechem and maybe losing their identity as a special people of God. Now, what does this all mean for us? Well, as a church, we also have these two dangers. There's two main ways that Satan tries to outdo the church and destroy the church. And one of them is through persecution. That's the most obvious one. Uh, when the world becomes offended at the church, uh, when they come and persecute the church and physically put Christians into prison or, or even put them to death, 
that's one avenue that Satan can take in trying to eradicate the church off of the earth. Just destroy them all. That happened at the very early stages of the church. And as that happened, that actually the opposite occurred. The church actually grew more the more it was persecuted. And then what happened? It, it Then with Constantine and, and Rome taking Christianity as a national religion, then the church began to get a bit, little bit more assimilated into the world. And that's where the Desert Fathers stepped in because they said, hey, you know, the church is becoming too worldly. It was becoming more, uh, your, people were becoming Christians just for the social status. And it became very worldly. And the Desert Fathers went out into the desert to kind of counteract that. But that was another danger that the church uh, had and faced. And so as as the church, the world can try to come at us in, in either of these directions, either to persecute us and try to kill us and wipe us off the face of the earth, or to lure us in and say, hey, you know, we'll give our daughters to your daughters. You give your daughters to our daughters. Our property will be your property. In other words, the world wants us to adopt their worldview, their ways of looking at life. And, you know, they might even look at things from our perspective if it's already, if it's palatable to them. Uh, but the main thing is, you know, let's not be different. You come in and be like us. And the church, when it does that, it begins to lose its identity as God's special people. And so we got to be careful of both of those things. And this is true not only as uh, the church in general, but also even in our personal lives. These are the two things that we might face as Christians. It might be that people come up against us. They might slander us. They might speak evil against us, uh, even in some parts of the world and maybe even some parts in this country. Maybe they would be physically, you might be physically persecuted in some way. Uh, maybe either by being pushed out, ostracized, left out of certain things, or other ways. But physically, in a very in-your-face type of way, uh, you might be persecuted in that way. Or, what, at least in our country, I think is more the case, is the danger of us beginning to be lulled into the way of the world. The way that the world thinks the priorities that the world has, and we begin to live for the world, and we want what the world has to offer. And so what do we do when we want what the world has to offer? Maybe we give up a little bit of what we have in Christ, just so that we can have a little bit more of the world. And then even we as individuals begin to lose our identity in Christ because we're being lulled by the world to become like the world. So these are some things we got to look out for. The physical persecution, that's obvious. That's easy to see. But it's when the world wants to assimilate with us and and when they want us to become like them and, and we begin to think like them, act like them. That's that's more subtle. And because it's more subtle, it's more dangerous. So we got to look out for that. So this is what we can walk away with as we think about Jacob and Shechem. Let's consider... All the different ways that Satan might try to come at us and be prepared and be on the alert. Uh, as Peter tells us, he says, be on the alert for uh, the devil uh, lurks about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And let's be cognizant of that. Let's be careful of that. And let's uh, be more and more committed to the Lord so that we can all the more show ourselves to be his distinct people, a peculiar people before him. So that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. I hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.